My name is Claudio and um, I work as a structural geologist and, uh, and geodynamist. So we develop in Rome some, some new methods to investigate the way uh, the mantle behave uh, doing fluidodynamic experiment and numerical experiment. So uh, if uh, I'll try to be as clear as possible uh, during this presentation, but if any problem, please uh, maybe better in asking question at the end or write me email directly to, this, uh, to my email. I can answer it to you and send you material if you need. And, and also uh, we had uh, so, some, some of the material I'm not showing you here, maybe more adapted also for, for teaching and, and so can be useful for you. So, um, Laurent introduced you to the Mediterranean in a very nice way and it's very clear way. So, you show up all, everything is on the surface and it show you how the, the complex setting that is the, the, the Mediterranean is a, a kind of mosaic, as a puzzle. So, in color here is the distribution of what we call microplate. It's not big plate, it's a plate that gets smaller with respect to the large one. And, and, uh, and in, in this, uh, this line are the main trusts, so the main tectonic boundary between one and the other domain. And when you look at this map, you see that all this line, black line, do this, have this complex shape, doing a, um, a snaky pattern, like uh, forming these narrow, narrow arcs, and then uh, like Gibraltar, Calabria, the Western Alps, Carpathian, Moesian, and then again uh, the Mediterranean, the Cyprus. So it's, it's so complicated. There are many people coming here, and that's Laurent told us. It's a really a, a, a natural laboratory where, where hundreds of people and, and, and for years coming to try to understand better what happened. So my, my duty here today is it's trying to convince you during these 30 minutes that indeed all this pattern that we see on the surface is, uh, is the result of a relatively simple pattern of mantle convection. Now, I'm not sure that I will try. <laughs> I'll try to do that. <laughs> but then you tell me if I succeed or not. Okay. So the outlet on the talk is three parts. And the first part is trying to put some fundamentals on, on the mantle convection, what we know, uh, how it works. So many of these things probably for you are simple, uh, you already know, so I will go fast. But uh, in case, I mean, can be useful, uh, recap. Then put some constraint on mantle flow from the Mediterranean, and this is, this is something that you already see with Laurent presentation, so I can go fast. And then try to go inside with you on modeling, what kind of models we can do to understand the pattern of mantle convection. So let me start from the beginning. So uh, we do have a quite rough picture of, of the mantle. It's not, it's not something that we can touch, so, so this is a very nice image as I found uh, uh, from well, the, 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 the idea three, four hundred years ago uh, of, of our mantle, and this is the idea we have now. So the progress has been made, but not that much, actually. It's very simplified structure. And this is because uh, the, the, we cannot really touch the mantle, of course. We can have sample from the mantle in form of xenolags. So this is uh, scraping from volcanoes when you're wrapped. You can open that. You can do thin section. You find this nice mineral, basically is olivine. So is a, is a, and this is the major constituent of, of our mantle. So what happened from 100 kilometers down to 2,700 kilometers depth, okay? But fortunately, we have seismic ray, and Claudia will introduce better on this topic. The seismic ray illuminate our mantle, and like like when you do, uh, you have a broken arms, you do your 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 investigation, and and, and now we can have in 3D uh, all the images of the mantle. And what the, the, the seismic images do is basically they travel alongside the mantle when you have an earthquake, and if they found area that are uh, denser uh, or colder, they can go faster. Huh? So they do an anomaly. When they found area that is hotter, then the density is lower, then it goes slower. Okay? So what we can have is basically coming out with a, a picture like this one, and then we, we call it tomography. So we have a 3D pattern of where the area are, the, the, where, where the, the velocity of the, our Seismic ray go faster or slower. Okay. 
The other fundamental constraint comes from isostasy. Isostasy is a, is, has been a really big impulse to understand what is the behavior of our mantle, huh? how it behaves in terms. So you, all of you know has, how isostasy work. It's just Archimedes, for it's okay? So that this is simple, and the iceberg is clear, the images of what happened. Huh? But when it, we go on the Earth, just at the beginning of the last century, we immediately understand that this ostasy was at work also on the Earth. And this was done by, by this guy, Haskell, in 35. He already understand that um, when you melt, the, because of the melt of the, of the ice uh, during the last uh, uh, ice, ice, of the ice caps, then you can have a rebound of the crust and the rebound to go with the velocity, but it's not linear, it's exponential. And so the guy here understands uh, more than 100 years ago that it's due to the fact that the mantle behaved like a viscous medium. And this was the big hit, you know? It changed completely our mind. And gave numbers as well from the velocity. This is the cost line when you have in a lake, when you have uh, the glacial, glacial uh, pack, it's melt down, then the lake go up, and then you see the print of the coast. So you can measure the, the you can have the age of each of them, staircase, and then you can measure the velocity. And then we come out with the viscosity of the mantle that is coming out to 10 to the 22 Pascal per second, uh, which is a large viscosity, so a strong viscosity, a very high number, but it still behave like a fluid, not a melt, fluid, okay? And, and, and the other guy that gave, gave a very important contribution on understanding that is, is Arthur Holmes. He already writes, largely before Alfred Wagner, the idea that uh, the mantle can convect. This guy came from, from uh, it was uh, a uh, from geochemical background, and, and he understand immediately that you can have latent heat and, and also that can be released by uranium thorium, for example, and then so you can have a convection going on, and then you already in, uh, understand that you can have new ocean, you can have subduction and everything in 1999. That's a, so that's a, that's a great hit. So now we have a better images of what's happening. And this is thanks to the tomography. I say before, this is micro images, this is the depth. So when you look at our globe, there are patches of area that where the anomaly are blue, so the, the, the ray goes faster and then goes slower. So it means that probably our mantle is doing with patches of uh, red and blue that uh, move at rate of a centimeter per year. And thanks to that, we can also do some more. We can, we can now be able, with numerical model, to really understand where the area of the blue, the downwelling, the subduction zone, this is the core, this is the surface, this is uh, the way we imagine that is now subducting material, and this is the way that uh, we think it's, it's upwelling the material with the uh, narrow well or with the large super swell. Okay? So this is the way we imagine the mantle is convecting. And now come to Alfred Wagner, of course. Everybody knows him. He writes his origin of continents. We now have a very nice images of how the continent is moving on the surface. And this is uh, uh, one of the reconstruction we done. On the top, we have the, the uh, with the clock and time in million years, so it's 2060. So we can go back even before the magnetic anomaly on the ocean by using paleomagnetism, for example, uh, and then the uh, polar wonder path, and we can reconstruct this. Uh, the breakup of the Pangea was a big continent, and uh, Mediterranean is somewhere here, is here, Italy, is here, Iberia, and whatever. So the scale now is very large. And this is uh, uh, now entering uh, Jurassic, and, and we have the Lhasa block going, the Gondwana is still, uh, still is now is broken up, and the Seychelles here, we have Madagascar, India separating from Africa, the North Atlantic is opening, and then the South Atlantic as well, and they both unzip up to the arriving to this notch, then the Africa is free to move to the north with respect to South America, and then, and then uh, we start having compression, while India starts drifting to the north, very, very high speed rate, and, 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 and punching inside Asia. 
uh, at very high rates. So arriving to our present day configuration. So now we know better the movement of the, all the continent. Uh, and, and so uh, we know better the mantle, we know better the continental surface. Coupling the two is still a little bit tricky. Who is driving, what is doing, everything. So plate tectonics, of course, is the solution, everybody knows. And this is the subduction process. So subduction is the best expression of convection because you're putting cold material inside a hot mantle. Okay? And, uh, and you bring in, in a convecting material, bring the ocean that is, this is, this is cold, it bring down, uh, and this is the thermal boundary layer of the convection cell, it go down to the mantle. And the result in tomography, for example, in a section in Japan, is something like that. Huh? And, and, and the, the concept is that when you, do, when you do have a subduction zone going, for example, this movie can show you clearly, because the trench, because of this, the subduction zone is inclined, the load of the subduction zone this way, so you produce extension on the back arc. So while you're doing subduction, you have convergence between the plate, but near the, the, the hing of the, of, the, of the slab is rolling back, and then so you produce extension on the back arc. And this is the fundamental mechanism working in the Mediterranean. So, just uh, summing up, I'm coming uh, to, to my conclusion of this little introduction. So, the earth cool, so, and, and while, while cooling out, it convects and behaves like a viscous fluid, and the velocity of convection is about centimeter per year. This is the scale. Um, and, and we do have a picture of, the, of what is the real shape of uh, our uh, convection cell. And this is uh, showing a very simple pattern, uh, apparently. We, indeed, it's more complicated. But uh, if you do an equatorial section, we do two super swell and two zone of downwelling. So it's like a degree two convection, very simple one. Okay? And in this pattern, the lithosphere behaves like a more rigid part, and it's the shallower part. So let's go on the Mediterranean. What we know is, of course, still on the surface. So many of the constraints on mantle flow in the Mediterranean already, uh, Laurent gave it to us. So the frame is this one. The, the plates, here are the numbers. So you have the clock going, uh, running. Um, uh, the Africa is moving very slowly to, uh, toward Eurasia. So velocity of motion of Africa is about centimeter per year. It's very slow Africa. All the continent in plate tectonics move very slowly. And this is also because probably they have roots. Huh? They are big, the tetosphere, huh? so they are anchored in the mantle. So they have all time to move. Whereas the ocean are thinner, so they can go faster and are denser. So participate more. Actually, the best expression of mantle convection on the surface are the continent. Because are the real the thermal boundary of this convection cell. Okay? So, we are fortunate because, uh, because in the Mediterranean we are dealing with two big plates. One is Asia, it's not moving at all in this reference frame, and uh, the other one is Africa, that is hardly moving. Okay? So this is the velocity, and you already saw that uh, in, in Laurent talks. Uh, so the, uh, the red is, is what the velocity, so it's about centimeter per year, in a way, to the north. Okay? What is good is that this is very different to what you have in the Indian, for example, plate. When you have velocity so slow, then you can preserve a lot of the tail on the surface of what happened. And this was the good thing of the Mediterranean is that it's a kind of incomplete collisional process. So, so we have trace still preserved on the surface of what could be a big collision. What will be the future Himalaya, the Noah, and, and, and Tibet? Still there in the early stage, incipient stage, so we can understand better what happened. Okay? So this is the evolution of the Mediterranean, and you already see that in Laurent talks. So this is the red, is the subduction zone. I rerun it twice. And the blue is a kind of a little ocean that was trapped there, uh, and, and it's uh, guiding completely the, uh, the, the uh, in a way, the, the beginning was like this, we have a subduction zone running beneath Iberia, another one beneath the Aegean and Turkey and going farther to the east. And then the Alps make us something different and there's a little change here. And then we have the little, another little embayment here. So you start here 
And because the subduction zone uh, it consume only oceanic lithosphere mostly, because the oceanic lithosphere is dense and want to go down, the continent is light, it's to stay up, then you will produce the arc. Because uh, this red line would like to consume this embayment progressively and also this one. Okay, so I rerun it slowly and you form the arc because you are consuming this uh, uh, blue uh, material slowly. Which it was uh, a Jurassic Ocean, a little Jurassic Ocean. Okay? And, and do we have evidence of that? Yes, we do. And this is Claudia, uh, that uh, next speaker. Uh, tomography that uh, that uh, show up very nicely in the Mediterranean where this blue is now where we can find this blue in the mantle and actually high velocity anomaly so the one we say before is where the seismic ray go faster and everything is plot with respect to a reference frame huh? a reference model okay so we gave the color is on percentage here huh? so okay so so this blue for example will be one percent faster than the than a model, okay? That's the way we have to present it. It's a model of a model, actually, yeah? tomography. So. Um, but there are also red points. So you can recognize that under 50 kilometers, so you make slice at the Alps, the Northern Apennines, Sicily, Northern Africa, Dinarites, Hellenites, a lot of little chain. But what is interesting, and when you go deeper, huh? when you go deeper, there is uh, this blue anomaly spread, <coughs> And when you go at 660, you have found an enormous amount of high velocity anomaly. And what does it mean? This is actually the ocean, the Jurassic Ocean, that was between Africa and Eurasia, and now it's tolling at uh, the boundary between the upper mantle and the lower mantle, which is actually the 660 discontinuity. So it was the mantle get the more viscous. And not all the slab can penetrate down. Some of them can stall at this boundary. So it's incredible for us to find out in our reconstruction done by the geologists, then looking at the seismological result, and they match together. But also, from these images, you can learn another lesson, which is fundamental. The fact that uh, uh, when you compare the image is 660 with the image is 150. You find that the colors are completely different. You go down, everything blue, up is everything red. And what does it mean? It means that convection is bringing cold material that was first on the top to the bottom and vice versa. So we are looking at very active convection area. Okay? Then we have seismic anisotropy also, which is a little bit more complex pattern, and so I will try to uh, go a little bit faster here. But uh, the basic impulse is when the seismic ray arrive uh, and cross the mantle, uh, there is a little crystal, it can be polarized in the right direction where the seismic ray go faster, huh? just because the, the, the crystal is deformed. And what we plot here is that the direction of the faster direction. Okay, so the seismic ray somehow is polarized and at the depth between 100 and 300 kilometers go faster in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the direction that uh, it's indicated by this uh, little uh, bar. Okay, just as uh, simple as that. Then it's th things are a little bit more complicated, but, but in a way it's like that. And show a very simple pattern. This is an extraordinary result. This is plot on top again of the Claudia tomography. And, 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 and you see that, uh, uh, for example, in Iberia, everything going east-west. So the, 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 the fast polarization of, of, the, of the seismic ray is east-west, whereas here is, everything is going this way. So here, everything is pointing out between the area of Calabria, where there is subduction still going, and, and the Elenite, where subduction is still going, and, and, and seems that attracting material laterally, so in a very consistent pattern. We will see it again. And then we have the surface, and this is Lorraine already mentioned to that. So we have this map, it's the present day deformation map. So we have uh, 
velocity done by the arrow, uh, the GPS again. GPS is a fundamental constraint for kinematics in an area like that. If without a GPS, we cannot do much. Huh? And GPS help us to localize the active faults where will be the next, uh, I mean, in the kind, the, the, the risk where it's higher, where the fault accumulate, et cetera, et cetera. So the denser the network, the better it is. And, and now, I mean, uh, uh, we have, uh, the, for example, this fantastic uh, uh, counterclockwise rotation pattern that from between Arabia, Anatolia, and Aegea. So you, you have this uh, vortex eh, with, the, with the center of rotation in the Nile Delta, basically, that accelerating toward the Aegean. So showing that, uh, they, as Laurent said, they, they, the subduction zone is probably playing a very important role to bring Anatolia and, and et cetera. But also here in Adria, the things are very complicated. This is the reason of our earthquake in Italy, for example, because the coastline here of our peninsula is moving to the east uh, faster than, than the other side in Rome. So basically, all the Apennine is under extension, and this is why we had uh, L'Aquila, Colfiorito, and Amatrice, all the S earthquake during the last four years. And, and, and the, the very dangerous solution is not only in Istanbul, but we also have it one year because Sicily want to move in this direction to Spain, where Calabria want to move to the Balkans. And we have the Sicily Strait, where we had this tremendous earthquake in the, in the beginning of the last century in Messina. Uh, we have 100,000 people uh, die. So, so uh, Claudia will talk more about that. So the data also the earthquake, and you see that uh, they are mostly in the crustal path and, and they're increasing more farther to the east. And the color is scale with the depth, and so most of the earthquake is crustal. So fundamentally, what we have when you look at this picture is that on the surface, we have uh, plates that move irrespectively of the overall convergence frame. So as, as Laurent say, internal dynamics have to work here. Huh? And, and, and second, so the question is, what is driving all of that? And how is the mantle playing any role? At this little scale, because we are used to look at the mantle at a big scale with the big plates. So we can do some model. Uh, okay, so now we enter in another field. Uh, you have different possibilities when you do a model, uh, at least three models. One is uh, going in the lab, Galileo Galilei, and trying to do experiments. So, planting fluids, uh, measuring things, whatever. The other one now is going to a computer and run model in the computer. Okay? This is uh, uh, now getting more popular and popular. The third one is a poetic model, and this is the one I love more, actually, is make drawing. And basically, this is also a very important point, part of the scientist's uh, idea. And, and, and because uh, when, when you think about something, the first thing you have to do is to make drawing. And this is a, a fundamental step in under, under, understanding process. So this is an image, for example, at the beginning of the last century of someone was doing modeling laboratory, was doing mountain belt. Actually, he was a very clever guy eh? and, and uh, more uh, reproducing the Appalachian, actually, mountain. So this is a poetic drawing done by Malin Werner Ryan, for maybe one of the most cited papers for the Mediterranean, like uh, uh, written in Teutonics, and, and, and showing what is the concept of a slab rollback. Eh? Uh, so you have two plates, but because of the hinge of the slab is retreating, then you have a stanchion on the back. And so the amount of compression just uh, could be compared with the amount of extension. And you form the arcs because uh, the paleogeography of the Mediterranean, as I showed you before, was already formed with a narrow embayment of oceanic basin. So, for example, this is one of the sections. If you have a, a golf or near, sitting in these uh, bars, uh, crossing or uh, going to Calabria, so you, this is what you see in the, in the tomography. And then uh, the structure on the surface are two basin, the Ligure Provencal and the Tyrrhenian. And then you can argue, uh, this is the slab. So this going down, and when you arrive to the lower, lower upper mantle discontinuity, it's flat down. So we can go, for example, with this reconstruction, we can make a drawing. This is the poetical part. But you, when you do poetical part, it's restoring back in time uh, the, the, the situation, uh, because we know how much was the extension, so you can reconstruct. This is the shape. And, and then you realize that, for example, the end of the first basin, when the Sardinia and Corsica stop rotating, and the beginning of the new phase of extension can be related to the point 
where the slab hit the 660 discontinuity. And if it's the case, for example, we can go in the laboratory and try to understand how you can obtain a geometry like that. And this is very interesting. For example, this is Francesca's work. And, and it take, she takes a tank, a very big tank, and she put uh, some of the syrup very viscous on the bottom, some of the syrup here was, was not. And you can do also with, your, with your, your classroom, actually. It's a little complicated, but not too much. And, and some of the, of, of, the silly, of the syrup here was, uh, was less viscous. So this is mimicking the upper low amount of transition. And on top, she put some, some high viscosity layer, like silicon, it's viscous, uh, like can be a putty huh, for a model, something like that, a little denser. And just wait, and just wait what happened. And, and what happened is that the slab was down, and then when hitting the higher viscosity, it fall down and, and take this shape. So this is very similar to what obtained here. Huh? It was very interesting. There's a lot of fluid dynamic actually here. It's not that easy. The problem is that when the slab arriving to this point, it's just decreasing the velocity, huh, in a way. And decreasing the velocity uh, just probably stop one phase of extension before the other phase of extension. And this is due because uh, to do rollback, for your, your slab to roll back, you have to move material from below the slab and to put on top of the slab. So you have to decompress huh, the mantle. Can you imagine to, if you take a spoon, you take it in your, in, your, in your honey, and then you push uh, back your spoon, then you have to move material from the back of the spoon, okay? That's it. So we immediately realized that to obtain such a kind of situation, this is another movie, you, 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 you obtain, when the spoon go back, like the subduction zone, you have the, mat the mantle material have to escape laterally. And if you look from the top, your process, this is, this is the subduction zone in the trench, what you produce is a big vortex here. We call toroidal flow, huh? and this is the poloidal flow. So you, this, this process produces an enormous uh, uh, impact on, on the way the mantle should steer and, and do, during subduction. And you can do the same numerically, huh? which is nicer. Huh? Of course, the things are more complicated. There are pieces of continent, pieces of ocean that are going, so they may be more complicated. Huh? And, and so you may also do more elaborate, complex model. I just show you fastly that without entering too much in detail. The physics was there, but if you have pieces of continent like this red, uh, and, and then you have the ocean that is an embayment here, so this is a 3D view. So what we can have, uh, it's a process like you have a subduction, then the continental block, like for example, this can be Adria, enter in subduction, and then, but it's buoyant, so you don't want to enter in subduction, so you start having break off, and then you have uh, the slab, is, you have some extension here, broke with the little pieces, and then you arrive to that. In fact, in the Mediterranean, there is no subduction going on, only in little piece. There is a one little piece of subduction between Calabria and Warnes by the Aegean. Before, there was a long subduction, and this is probably the cause of that, because there was pieces of continent arriving, and they don't want to subduct. But the question is, can we model better? Can we understand better how is really convecting the mantle inside the Mediterranean? Huh? This is more complicated. This model look at the long-term process, but what is occurring now? Huh? And so you could do that. Take the tomography again, converting the tomography into density and try to see how the mantle convects. Hmm? And, and there is a number of, so it's a big model, a global scale, so the assumptions are very big. You can test viscosity of the mantle, you can test a lot of anomaly. And this is uh, our research, this is what we're doing now, actually, trying to better understand the impact of the mantle on the surface. And you can compare the result of our model with the surface deformation, horizontal and, and vertical, and mantle anisotropy. So I'll show you some of the examples of this model that we're running just now, and, and just to have a flavor of what happened. So again, the map of the Mediterranean, the orange are, are the geodetic velocity you're already familiar with, and the white is the result of the model. What that means, uh, we are just make a window, the mantle is convecting below, and what we observe is uh, how the microplate, the Adria and Anatolia is moving, and the white arrow are the result of the model. So if the model is good, the white arrow should be similar to the orange one. 
so and so. It's okay, it do something. In, in Anatolia, for example, the arrow show that it's moving in this direction, huh? but the Aegea, not at all, it doesn't work. Uh, and, and Andrea is doing quite good, it's showing that the orange, the black, the white arrow is moving in that direction. So it's mimicking this separation between Sicily and Calabria. So it's interesting. But what I think is very interesting actually is doing a cross section. So the, now the, the color in background is the tomography, but the arrow are the velocity field. And you see that uh, we have this uh, very large upwelling of material in the, in the Middle East going up. Going, <laughs> going up this material, and this material is, is also pushing Anatolia toward the subduction zone, so doing this, but it's also going up, and then it's going down, and then it probably go up in the Massif Central. So what we're looking at is scale. The scale of this little convection cell is about 200 kilometers from the base of the lithosphere to the uh, zone of transitions on 400 kilometers. So we have a little convection cell. And this is a lesson that we learned just here because the resolution is so good on the seismicity, on the tomography, that we can capture signal that are smaller than the large scale one. So we're not in the Pacific. We are, we are facing with a, a little convection cell that are running beneath the continent and this producing the pattern of complex pattern that we have uh, here. Why here? Here also in other areas, like in the Western US, all this area we call mobile belt, are area where are subject to this very small convection cell. So uh, there is also a larger convection cell, as, as Laran mentioned before, the AFAR is participating in a way to this pattern. Uh, this is a, a large upwelling that we have in AFAR, and this is the reason why you are pushing Arabia in this way, Anatolia in this way. So we should imagine that there is a, month, a larger amount of flow that are interacting. But be just beneath the, the Mediterranean, there should be a small convection cell. Um, so can we also look at other signal of that? So for the geodesy, it's okay. We can, some of the feature we see on the surface can be explained very really clearly by the, by the, 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 uh, the, by the, the convection. Can we have other signal? The other signal is the dynamic topography. So we, we, can say we have uh, one minute to understand what is the dynamic topography. Topography, of course, everybody knows, is the topography of the Earth. We, to make things complicated, try to separate two parts of the topography. One that is static, related to the isostasy, and one that is dynamic, we call dynamic. And we took this, the name from the marine community. Marine, the sea level is not fixed. If you have convection in the, mount, in the, in the, in the sea, the, the sea is going up, it's hot, and going down, it is cold. Everybody knows that. So, and there is a difference in the level of the sea, no? And the same occurs in the earth, we think. So when you have upwelling, the surface of the earth uprise. When you have downwelling, subside, okay? So, what we have in the real earth is probably convection in the mantle is influencing with this uh, dynamic signal, and then uh, we have uh, the, the real topography is this, there is a part of that that is isostatic, is simple, and the one, well, the one that is dynamic, okay? And you have the sum of the two, so the good, the important is to try to decipher one from the other. Huh? This is a, an interesting concept. We can learn a lot from the tomography, topography, actually. So what we can do is to calculate the residual topography. What is the residual topography? Taking the topography, filtering by isostasy, the component that we know related to the crust, and we know the thickness of the crust. Laurent show it to you. And then this is what is left. So basically, those color tell you that for example, Iberia is more elevated than it should be by isostasy, by 500 meters. Which is very interesting, actually, because Iberia is, you know, it's very high elevation on average. Huh? It's, it's, it's not normal, because there is very few deformation there, and the crust is not thickened. So, it's more elevated than... So, so one possible explanation for that is this dynamic signal that is going, bringing up Iberia, for example. But other areas also, um, or for example, the Apennine, the central Apennine, is more elevated than one should be. The Atlas is, is a very strong signal here, the Atlas Mountain. And there are areas that are less elevated than should be, like the blue one. 
And then you can compare this with our calculation from convection and see, well, if it corresponds, this is the calculation of the dynamic topography that we expect to have, and this is what we uh, measure. So you can compare the two and see whether it can be good or not. It's important because when you go in the field, actually, you realize, as I say, that Iberia is much more elevated than it should be, for example, but also other areas like the Anatolia Altiplano, which is standing at a couple of kilometers elevation, uh, is not justified by isostasy, so it needs support from the mantle. And if you have hot material rising, for example, you can uprise the surface of the Earth. Huh? So this is very interesting, actually, and, and uh, skip that. Uh, and when you do an inventory of all that process in the Mediterranean, you find that most of the area, most of the topography of the Mediterranean is not under isostasy, something wrong. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of discussion in the scientific community nowadays to try to understand whether this is a true signal or not. So it's a hot topic in, in science, this uh, in earth science. So the, the atlas is more elevated than it should be, uh, Iberia as well. Uh, the Massif Central is more elevated, but it be uplifted about 250 meters in the last three million years. Uh, the Northern Apennine, because there is a subduction zone, is less elevated than it should be. The Central Apennine is more elevated, and, and, and Southern Anatolia is, is largely uplifted, so, and is forced for dynamic topography. The last point that we can check with our model is the mantle and isotropy, and, <clears throat> and it's as simple as that. The blue is good, the red is bad. So most of the signal of the anisotropy can be fit by our convection model. So this is uh, okay, largely in this area of the Bekak region, Anatolia and, and Iberia. And uh, <clears throat> the last point that uh, we can talk about is the volcanism, actually. Uh, Laurent mentioned uh, volcanism is another expression of mantle many times in expression of mantle convection. But there are two types of volcanism. One that is produced by the melting directly of material that is subducting, and this is in white, we call subduction-related volcanism. Uh, and the other one is the green, uh, which is something that is nothing to do with the subduction, and we call intraplate. The signal is different, one has a lot of sodium, and the other one can be a lot of calcium and, and, and potassium. So uh, this is the distribution of the volcanoes in, inside the Mediterranean, and you plot that on top of the uh, tomography, for example, and you see that there is a lot of volcanoes that cannot be related to the subduction, so the green one, and plot on top of the red. So the red is where is the slow velocity, it's probably something upwelling. And, and the other one, it plot on the, on the blue. So the volcanism is mainly drive it by the convection in the mantle. Also, all this area here in, in, uh, in northern uh, uh, Syria, uh, in, in, the, in the FL, uh, and Massif Central, and, and, and also in Montetna, for example, that is just on the side of the slab, where we do have aspect to this uh, convection cell and producing a lot of upwell. So, <clears throat> I'm going to my conclusion. Hmm? So. Uh, uh, and I start, uh, this is my imagination. So let's start from the, from the seismic anisotropy. We have subduction going on here and subduction going on here. Those subduction zones produce a big return flow. Huh? So it's basically pushing attractive material from, oh, from northern France, Calabria attractive material from Spain, from also northern Africa. And, and the Aegean, because it's retreating, is attracting material from, from all this area, from Anatolia, and probably in this area there is also the participation of this larger scale convection cell. Huh? And the Pannonian also, there's a small subduction zone here in the Carpathian, attracting all the material in this sense, okay? But if you put on top of that also the volcanoes, then you can understand that there is a horizontal motion, but there's a lot of vertical motion as well. So basically, there are two subduction zones in the central Mediterranean that is attracting a lot of material and is producing a small convection cell. Huh? And the upwelling of the convection cell is basically here for the Calabria and here for the uh, Hellenic area. This figure probably better illustrates what I have in mind. And with that, I leave you with the small remarks. So I hope I try to convince you that the pattern of the formation we saw on the surface in the Mediterranean 
is the result of a relatively simple convection. We have two subduction zones running now, in the Calabrian zone, Apennine, and in the Lenic. And those produce a large return flow that produce uh, the formation on the, on the surface. But the important things that we realize and we learn from the Mediterranean lesson is that those convection cells are small on the size of 200, 300 kilometers. So we're not looking at the convection cell we have in the textbook that has a lower mantle from the Pacific, etc. Those are small things. And those small signals arise directly from the fact that we have a, a fantastic high-resolution seismic signal uh, and, and, and the, the fact that we have a very nice cover with res high-resolution images of the mantle provide us the possibility to imagine that. So if, we, if this is just rising now because we have a lot of stations in Italy, in France, in Spain, in Greece, and this provides us this information, and we lack completely in North Africa, unfortunately. The system is dominated in the Mediterranean completely by subduction, so the overall convergence frame plays a little role. Uh, we are not looking at this uh, like a Pacific style, it's just uh, something internal. So the, dynamic, the internal dynamic is driving everything. And there is a lot of complexity that we are just learning, like this uh, small scale uh, convection that may produce also uh, a big influence on the topographic signal. And with that, I thank you for your attention.